Hi everyone, today I have a different kind of video. This is a video that's going to highlight not only the astrophotography, but also the astrophysics behind it. There is a theory that galaxies are built from the aggregation of many smaller galaxies that combine, coming together through their gravitational interactions. This theory, if true, has cosmological implications. Astronomers can look at the very furthest galaxies away from us, that is the very earliest times of the universe, and in that epoch, see what the preponderance of galaxies look like back then. You can then compare that to what galaxies look like today and get a hint at whether or not this kind of theory is true. But if it is true, there are also things that we can observe potentially in what is called our local volume. Galaxies today that are not far away from us, we might be able to see fossil remnants, some uh, hints that this kind of theory must be true, or at least a reasonable thing to think about the universe and its evolution. One of the things you would expect to find is that if small galaxies build large ones, you would still see that process unfolding today. There's no reason to believe that it just completely stopped. And we might find traces of that in that galaxies, say galaxies like large spiral galaxies that are otherwise not affected by anything in their neighborhood, might still have small galaxies falling into them in the recent past. And what happens when that occurs is that a small galaxy will be tidally disrupted and it will leave behind a trace. Streams of stars and these stellar star streams can potentially be observed through telescopes. One of the main proponents of this particular theory is an astronomer named Dr. David Martinez Delgado. He devised a very interesting way to go about studying this. Uh, one of the ways that is necessary is to gather enough information to get enough galaxies that might show this fossil uh, signature that uh, you could put together the story. That's hard to do, though, because professional astronomers generally don't have as much time as necessary on large telescopes, which are oversubscribed, to get the necessary data. So... Uh, Dr. Delgado decided to reach out to the amateur community and make a pro-am kind of collaboration where amateurs, just like you, can go and observe galaxies and spend a lot of time to gather enough information to perhaps detect these very faint signatures of what is potentially a uh, very interesting kind of cosmological theory of how our universe has evolved through time. So you can make a contribution, which is a lot of fun. If you look at this paper, you can see that there are, in the past, he's assembled many amateur astronomers who have contributed to this effort in particular. When surveying the very nearest galaxies to us to look for these kinds of structures, the, another interesting thing is that amateur astronomers have a unique advantage because many of the telescopes that are used in amateur astronomy, much smaller than professional telescopes, have wide fields of view. Uh, galaxies are fairly close to us. If you have a very big telescope, you wouldn't be able to see these tidal streams orbiting the star, or orbiting the galaxy, because um, it's too big. It would go beyond the field of view, whereas in amateur telescopes, you're able to capture that kind of information. And I wanted to show you that this is not like uh, something that is esoteric or, or somehow uh, very mysterious to find. You can actually see these signatures in well-known galaxies. Here, just in July, was released uh, some images of M104, the Sombrero Galaxy. And in deep images, you can find, this is an artist rendition, but you can find these streams of stars orbiting it. And here is some deep imagery that shows in this inverted sense that there is actually a stream or loop of stars that is surrounding the Sombrero Galaxy. That would be very difficult to do with a large, big telescope but uh, with an amateur telescope, even a relatively small one, as long as you can observe under dark skies and take many, many uh, long exposures, you can potentially detect this and make a contribution in terms of science. I would highly recommend you check out these papers that I am showing on the screen. I'll show you a good place uh, to find them. I'll include links down below, uh, below this video. You can see here are some examples. I'll show you some nice ones in a moment. But I just want to also show you that uh, Dr. Delgado not only is in the search for these galaxies, but also to try to model on the computer to understand the physics of the interactions to see if what is um, actually observed 
seems to fit well with the physics and then support this particular kind of theory. You would also expect that if true, this uh, activity of having streams of stars orbiting the galaxy should be happening right here at home with our own Milky Way. And indeed, it is true. We have, for example, two galaxies that are being, well, it used to be one, the Magellanic Clouds are being torn apart and they have, not only do they have streams of stars between them, but there are also these streams of gas, because we're so close, we can actually detect just the gas that is orbiting our galaxy due to this disruption of the smaller galaxy that we are effectively incorporating exactly as this theory posits. One of the first really striking examples that was uh, observed were the loops of streams of stars that were surrounding NGC 5907. Here is some deep imagery that shows these loops of stars that orbit it. And it it's really was a kind of remarkable thing when this image was first published. One of the uh, results of this survey, and I have been lucky enough, fortunate enough to be part of the team, is that I had a chance to image some of these kinds of galaxies um, as part of this uh, endeavor. And here is a picture of a very famous galaxy, NGC 4414. It shows the shell, and so it's not a stream, but it's kind of like a cloud of stars orbiting this galaxy in the same kind of signature. Here, if you look at the inverted version of the image, you can see that much more clearly. And just to give you a sense that you really can kind of contribute and have fun because it's really exciting to be able to see these things that are unexplored in some sense today. One of the things that uh, I was fortunate to do and you can do too is take a picture of a galaxy that is of the kind that might have these stellar streams and detect them for yourselves. Here is an image of such a galaxy that I took that shows these streams. Here you can see, and it's very faint, but you can see going up and to the right and up and to the left two kind of linear structures. The one on the left even has what appears to be a small galaxy that might indeed be the thing that is making these streams of stars. This could be the sought after signature. So to memorialize that kind of find, I submitted a paper that has this information so that other astronomers can see this kind of information and potentially take advantage of it. I just took a picture that's great, but then, of course, if it's part of this greater survey and understanding of the evolution of the universe, well then, hey, that's uh, even better. One of the things that you can do is when you create these inverted images, it shows that uh, structure, I think, a little bit better with a little more contrast. In fact, this is where I want to go next. Now that you have an idea that there exists these stellar streams out there due to uh, an evolutionary trend of the universe, perhaps you might be interested in doing this for yourself and then you get some data, you'll want to process it. How do you make these very, very faint streams even visible in the data? Uh, because they are so faint, you have to make some very interesting processing choices and that's what I'd like to show you next. Now that you've learned a little bit about the astrophysics, I'd like to show you a little bit about the image processing. In some images, it's not really clear as to the, or at least it's not very striking, I should say, as some of the decisions that are made to make the image, you know, more striking or in some sense um, more appealing or tell that story that needs to be told. In this case, I think the story is quite clear. Here you can see what you basically get if you do everything in a normal standard way, you just combine the image, and this is with everything, all the enhancements that I would normally basically do. But the uh, stellar streams, no matter, you know, almost no matter what you do, are very, they're very, very dim. They're very hard to see here. And uh, the idea is to try to enhance them because that is, a, that's a big part of the story is I found these things. It'd be great if I could somehow make them show up in the final image. So uh, I'm just going to concentrate on that one little element and uh, some of the steps that I did that, that helped me to do it. Now, it, it, again, it's not a very striking thing. I didn't go in there and just paint by hand just to make the uh, streams brighter. I wanted in some way to use the data itself as a means of enhancing what is already there, the information that is already there. So here's what I did. I took this image and I basically extracted the 
uh, the brightness of this image. Call it the luminance of this image if you want. And then I uh, remove the stars using one of these techniques to, um, you know, get rid of all the stars and just leave everything else that is left behind. Starnet is the process that um, has, up until date, been the only one available in PixInsight. Uh, but now there's a new one, and it has a new algorithm, and it has a different kind of training. Um, it is Russ Croman's uh, Star Exterminator module, and I have that installed here as well. So I would encourage you to look up uh, Russ Croman's uh, Star Exterminator if you're interested in a slightly different version of the kind of result that you get. And his algorithm really helped me out here because of one of the things I need to do is capture really all of the stars, especially the very brightest ones. So this here is that, that extracted L, and then we have what is basically the, um, it is the starless version of the image. Now on some of the bright stars, you can still see features here. And what I need to do is in some way, uh, I want to ignore all the stars, right? All I'm interested in is everything that is left over after I've removed stars and galaxies and everything else, just those streams. So one of the things that you can do whenever you use, and this applies to both uh, StarNet and Russ Croman's Star Exterminator, you can always get the image that is the stars that work, everything that was extracted or that was removed from the image to make the starless version. So the other half or whatever fraction of that other information is itself an image that you can also take advantage of. So you can see it's not here, but it's over here. So I called this image my stars only image. These two images are the ones that are the basis for me to be able to uh, manipulate here. So I have the stars here and then I have the starless version here. The first thing that I consider doing is the following. Really, I want to subtract everything in this image down to a certain level. The only thing that interests me are things that are a little bit brighter than the sky because that's what, that's what these values are. In other words, and this is literally the way that I was thinking of it, let me show you that uh, luminance image that is, here is the original luminance image that I used to create uh, the LRGB thing. I called it here loom. Here it is. And I'll take a step back. So this is the actual original luminance, luminance image. And this is my starless image. If I took this image and subtracted this, uh, this image from the starless version, I would basically end up with zero. I would have nothing at all. But what if instead I subtract everything that is only brighter than a certain value, that is only those values that are brighter than the sky, i.e. those values that are brighter than the stream, if I subtract only that much, then all I'll be left with is everything that is similar in brightness to the stream, because everything else doesn't interest me. So what I decided to do was I took this image here, and if I go a step forward, I black clipped it. What that means is I adjusted here with the histogram transformation, making everything black. These are actual real zero values here. Everything black up to a point that is brighter than those streams. You can't see the streams in this image. That means if I take this image here and subtract it from this image here, um, all of the, you know, the galaxy, the stars, everything will be black things basically in the image. And then I'll only be left with that stuff that was not subtracted. And that's all the faint stuff. So that is exactly what I did in the next step. I just used pixel math. And you can see it if you look in the history explorer here. You can see pixel math where I took the starless image and I subtracted the loom here. So if I take a step forward, that's what you get. So these very faint gray values, that's everything that's left over basically. And you can very dimly see here, I mean, you can see some artifacts, which does not interest me, of course, but you can see the, um, the trails, the streams. Now, if you take another step forward, all I did here is increase the contrast. Uh, that is, I, on this image itself, I raised the black level so that um, I have a greater contrast between the uh, whatever's left over here, the sky and the 
streams themselves. Now, these are this is very, very noisy information because they are just so incredibly faint. In fact, what you'll see is that all the stars in here, they all have that, that scattered light around them as well, and that's approximately the same brightness as the streams. So if I'm going to be doing an enhancement of my image, I don't really want to have all the glows around the stars, and I don't want this glow either, but there's not much I can do about that one. Um, all I want really is the glow from the streams. So what I did is, do you remember how there's that uh, star image? That's this image here. If you blur this image like this, and then subtract it from this image here, this star is now bigger than the original star was. So that when I subtract this from this image, I'm gonna to start to eat away at the halo around, uh, in this case, the very bright star. So watch what happens when I go forward. You can see all of my pixel math expressions. Again, I'll show you in the Explorer. You can see what I'm doing here. I am subtracting this star's only image that I've blurred from this one. And watch what happens to the bright star. Do you see how I'm making the halo? Uh, basically, you know, I'm gonna beat it down. I'm gonna make it not be as much of a problem in the image. Now, as it so happens, I only did that for the very brightest stars. I didn't worry about the dim ones here because at the end of the day, I chose not to even display the rest of the frame. I'm only gonna be worried about kind of this region of the image. And so I was most worried about the bright star. If I wanted to do a further subtraction from what you see here, and let's go a little forward, there it is. A further subtraction from this point, what I could do is I'm just gonna make a, a copy of this thing here. And this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna call this ZZZ, just so I have this. But I can use the star, uh, stars only image as a tool. In other words, I was blurring by a whole bunch, which was only helping me get rid of the glows around these stars. But if I only blur a little bit, um, and that's why I started with the big one first. So if I only blur a little bit with convolution, so we just, uh, let's reset this here. So we go like maybe this much. Let's see if that's too much or not. Okay, let's, let's give that a try. So if I, now get pixel math here. And I say, what is the name of this thing? Oh, ZZZ, of course. And I say ZZZ minus star, oh, type, type. ZZZ minus stars, do I put an underscore? No, only. Looks like I need to go a little bit more here. So we would do, I don't know, is convolution still out? I don't remember if I left it out, convolution. Uh, it wasn't getting the glows around some of the bigger ones there. So we just make that a little bit larger. Apply this like this. And then if we needed a little more brightness there, we can raise the brightness, or maybe even we just use here, use this like that. And then of course we could continue to do the subtraction here. So you, the point is you can use this as a tool. Now, what I'm not doing properly here is I really need to uh, not include the sky here. So it's very important to black clip this, but you can use this as a tool to subtract out the halos of those stars. Let me uh, try to improve my tool here. <laughs> uh, so let's try that again. Ta-da! Let me go back a few steps here. Okay, so that's what I had, and now I can do this. So you can see that I'm now getting rid of the halos around some of these other stars, but I'm not touching at all the, the trail. So I, I was just trying to indicate here one of the important steps that I was doing is I was using the stars only as a method of getting rid of the glows around stars. The fact that these are black here is fine because of the way that I blend it later having black or dark pixels doesn't harm anything at all. And so that was the, that was the method. Now I'm gonna close this. And the original one is here. So the next thing you can see I do is I employ a very 
um, aggressive because there's no detail here. Very, very aggressive noise reduction to the image. And then finally, uh, make it as contrasty as I can. I think I used MMT here. If we look at the history, you can see that I used uh, MMT here for the final kind of enhancement here. I'll show you that I just basically bumped up the bias at one of the very large levels to improve this. Now again, I could have done better with these other stars, but I didn't include them in the final result. This was the enhancement that I was, that I was basically going for. In my final result, there is a bit of a glow around the galaxy. The galaxy itself has an extended glow, and that, that's real. I mean, that's just the way it is. So it's somewhat of an artifact when I did do this blend in the final result that uh, the edge of the galaxy has a bit of an excess glow to it, but I didn't find it objectionable. Um, and technically, you can manage that with the mask, of course. So that was the processing I wanted to show. There, are two, there were two key things here. One was the subtraction of the bulk of the signal to leave just the faintest things. And the other part was the removal of the glows around the stars. By the way, that technique is very much similar to uh, a technique that Fabian uh, Nayer um, uh, uses to remove scattered light in his fields of stars. It's a, I have a YouTube video on his technique. It's kind of where I snagged that idea from. So, at the end of the day, we end up with a kind of uh, final result. And I have here basically a comparison between the two images. The one that I did way back when, here, maybe I can't make it that big, and, and the one that we just worked on, just completed here. There we are. So obviously I did many other kinds of different things here. On the right, you can see my 2015 version. And if your monitor is <laughs> calibrated, you may be able to see very dimly here, because again, I, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to go overboard with it. I just wanted to hint that those trails, those streams are there. Um, but you'll see in the, in the recent version with PixInsight, Knowing what, I, I was never really happy with this, knowing the uh, better kind of the direction that I wanted to go, I wanted to really highlight some of these small details in the galaxy, which are these, uh, these H2 regions running around. There's a better color contrast between the inner part of the galaxy, the outer blue, the inner yellow, and these H2 regions. All of that came about because of the different choices that I made that were available in PixInsight. Uh, to take advantage of here. Otherwise, the images, you know, they look pretty similar, right? And you wouldn't expect it to be worlds apart, universes apart. I mean, I wasn't, I was a pretty good processor even in 2015, uh, but today with PixInsight, you know, uh, I think that I improved the image a little bit more. And then, of course, using that technique that I just showed, I was able to enhance the streams a little bit more so that I hope they look natural, but obviously I am enhancing them so that they show up a little bit better against the, uh, that sky, which is, um, uh, it, it's not much, the sky and these streams are about the same brightness. So obviously I needed to make the contrast fairly high here in this image, making the, the background dark to make them stand out against the background. But there's nothing more fainter than those streams. There's nothing more to display there. It's all just noise, basically. So I, I went with a dark background here in the hopes that these streams would stand out. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of presentation which showed some of the astrophysics as well as some of the image processing highlighting a particular part. I would add that the full processing set, I made this data set available. So the full processing is available to members of um, AdamBlockStudios.com and every step that I do you get to see you get to see the full kind of extent of all of these decisions. And uh, this particular element that I'm highlighting is supposed to, you know, get you excited about that. I'd like to know in the comments if this kind of video is of interest. Um, I have lots of images that I think that I can highlight particular elements of what made them a little bit special. Uh, so if you like this kind of video and you'd like to see more, perhaps, uh, you have seen my portfolio of images and there might be a particular image or two that is of interest, like how did he do that or what, what did he do to make this stand out so? 
uh, let me know. Uh, make some suggestions. Thank you very much for joining me here. Uh, this is a new thing for me, and I, and I really hope you enjoyed it.